Number 16. The Most Disgusting House The first thing you may be asking yourself is, why is this guy in there with a hazmat suit on? Well, apparently, this house is on the market for $475,000. I guess it is a fixer-upper. Anyways, the tour goes like this. The living room is nasty, but apparently it's better than the rest of the property. The garage is covered with vines and trees are pushing their roots up through the floor. The bathroom speaks for itself, to be honest. Nobody really needs to look at that. But the story goes that the house, although only 60 years old, was once lived in by a horse and that this is why it's gone all to hell. The trouble is, though, there are literally things growing up through the floor, but the realtor, as is traditional, says that it has real potential for someone with a vision. Well, maybe if that vision involves a lot of flames, but even though this place is clearly a steaming turd of a purchase, it sits in an area of California where the houses regularly sell for over half a million dollars. So apparently this is a fair price. Sounds like a lot of cod swell up to me, but what do I know? Tell me, would you buy this disgusting house? Is it really a great deal, or is that realtor having a giraffe? Number 15. Corpse Flowers Well, doesn't that one sound absolutely delightful? What a glorious name. So evocative. I just wonder what mutatious wonders are within. The dead horse arum lily is an ornamental plant that comes from the islands of Sardinia, Corsica, and the Balearics. It would have to be ornamental because it has a terrible pong that is enough to put you right off eating your tea. The stinky old dead horse arum lily is so called on the account of the pungent perfume of rotting meat that emanates from its flowers. This is designed to attract blowflies that are then attracted to the stink of carrion, as they act as the main pollinators for the flowers. It is gross, but it's also effective. The other thing that this plant seems to be able to do is alter its own temperature. Yes, it is able to raise its own temperature through a process called thermogenesis. This is also another way that it can lure flies into its insides in order to get to the pollen and then go and spread it all around. Number 14. The Fatberg in London. The fatberg is what is formed in a sewer system when fat, oil, and grease are poured down the sink. And then that stuff combines with all the grossest things that you could think of, stuff that should not be flushed down the toilet, like wet wipes, diapers, and cotton swabs. And in a city the size of London, all of that stuff builds up pretty quickly and can form one massive disgusting blockage. They call it a fatberg. You know, like an iceberg, but made out of fat. Anyways, the London sewer has been dealing with these monster fatbergs for years. They can take dozens of Thames water engineers many weeks to clear the pipes, much of which has to be removed using their hands. As if that wasn't grim enough, just consider the size of this thing. They can grow to be as big and heavy as three double-decker buses. Ugh. Since the last enormous blockage, Thames Water has had a snazzy new slogan to remind people of what they are able to flush. That would be the three P's. Pee, poo, and paper. How delightful. We're having such fun together today, aren't we? What joys do we have next, Twinkle? Number 13. Eye Worms. Oh, great. This is just what we needed. Or perhaps not. If you happen to be all about to eat your tea or scoff down a sandwich or something, although why would you be doing that during this video, that's well beyond me, then you probably want to wait just a little bit longer, because this next one is most likely going to make you barf. Eye worms, yes, they are exactly what they sound like, are worms that are found in your eyes. I don't think I can even go through with this one. Can you? Are you even still watching? Eye worms are a kind of parasite, meaning that that they live off of another organism or its host. There are several types of parasitic worms that can be lodged in the eyeball. Some enter your body via undercooked meat or fish. They usually take up residence in your intestines. 
but they can also travel to other parts of your body, and that includes your eyeballs. And if they do so, then that becomes very serious and can actually cause you to lose your sight. Other kind of worms can enter the body through a bite from an infected fly. It can then move to different parts of the body and also produce larvae in the infected person. And yes, these can also get all the way to your eyeballs as well. There are actually a whole heap of different disgusting worms that can end up in your eyes. Some are found in dogs and cat poop, others in infected meat, but most of them can cause real harm if they make it up to your eyeballs. I think we all get the idea. Shall we move on swiftly then? Number 12. Perfection Made People Sick a Netflix film starring Allison Williams and Logan Browning has allegedly been making people sick just from watching it. The Perfection is a horror film from 2018 in which two American classical music students are traveling in China. It sounds kind of boring, except that it's full of gross body horror and stuff that's given many viewers the heebie-jeebies. In fact, it's so disgusting that some people have called it the grossest movie ever. One of the characters comes down with a mysterious illness Illness, she has symptoms that include what appear to be bugs crawling under her skin, and when she throws up, there are creepy crawly creatures in the vomit as well. Apparently all of this puke triggered a whole lot of people to sympathy vomit, yes it is a thing, and lots of us just get sick if we see someone else get sick, and I can concur, it is an actual thing. Let's just move on, I need to know what's next. Number 11. Naval Stones. Ah, jeez. Things are not exactly improving as we go through this video, now are they? Here we have something that I could have lived every single one of my days without ever knowing about. These things are, apparently, naval stones. It has absolutely nothing to do with the navy, but all about the human navel as in your belly button. Naval stones are basically what happens if people do not wash their belly buttons, especially if they have an extra deep one or or if they're very overweight and washing inside of their belly button can be more difficult. They can take years to develop, yes, years of not washing properly, and may need the skills of a medical person to remove when they have formed. A navel stone is usually dark brown or black and hard to the touch. It is the accumulation of dirt, dead skin, hair, sebum, and all the other schmutz that all of you filthy animals have left festering inside of your dirty navels. How many of you just poked a finger in your belly button to check what was going on in there? And if you think that's gross, smell it. Number 10. The Fungus That Turns Insects Into Zombies in the Amazon rainforest, there are many weird and wonderful things. There are also some truly creepy and gross things that we probably wish we didn't know about. But today, we're really leaning into the more disgusting side of life, so here you are. This is a type of fungus that makes insects into zombies. What that basically means is that this parasitic fungus attaches to the insect host by infecting the foraging creature through spores, and then it works to penetrate the insect's exoskeleton until it slowly controls its entire body. It sounds extremely sinister and like the beginning of a horror movie. In the end though, the fungus grows and it compels the insect to move away from its own environment and into a more humid climate in order to favor the growth growth of the fungus. At this point, the insect is helpless to resist and will eventually wind up on a leaf. Interestingly, about 10 inches off the ground and with a northern facing vantage point. Then the insect will be trapped until it dies, and it will die slowly as the fungus feeds on the insect's insides. After the insect dies, the fungus finally sends out a new fruiting body out of the base of the shriveled dead insect's head, and that will send out new spores to infect new victims and start the cycle all over again. It's absolutely brutal. Number 9. Horrifying Close-Up of an Ant in recent times, cameras have advanced to such an extraordinary degree that we've been able to see things in the natural world that we would have never truly noticed before. Often, that is a privilege, like peeping at the secret world of polar bears or watching the previously unseen lives of rare birds in the wild. All of it up close and personal, 
and in high definition as well. But sometimes those amazing, powerful cameras show us stuff that will most likely end up in the dungeon of garbage that we reserve for our extra scary nightmares. Like this picture of an ant. Ants in general are not the most scary of things ever. That is unless, of course, you're being bitten by a million bullet ants or something. But that is because we're usually in the fortunate position of being much, much bigger and far away from their face than this. Just imagine being a smaller insect and staring up at that face. Not only is it a scary, super magnified image, but that ant looks really angry about something now, doesn't it? Number 8. Headless Chicken Sea Monster Oh, what a beautiful sounding name. What could possibly be in the least bit creepy about this animal? This creature has a name which translates to headless chicken monster, and it kind of looks like you might imagine it would now, doesn't it? The animal is actually a sort of deep sea cucumber, an invertebrate marine animal, which is part of the echinoderm family of sea dwellers that also includes starfish and sea urchins. They may look a bit on the scary side, but these things are not exactly massive, nor are they any kind of threat to you. In fact, they mostly like to eat algae and flap around in the deepest of seas using their funny little fins. Humans actually pose more of a risk to the lowly old sea cucumber, as these things have been used in folk medicine and also prized as delicacies in many parts of the world. So the new headless chicken kind is probably going to regret getting itself filmed, looking all like a tasty sea creature and getting named as a kind of chicken. That's not really going to end well for this little animal. Number 7. The Atacama Skeleton here we are at the Atacama Desert in Chile. It is the oldest desert on Earth and has been in this state of semi-arid conditions for around, oh, a measly 150 million years already. It's the most dry, non-polar desert in the world and also pretty massive. It stretches across a huge swath of land that's about 600 miles between the Cordillera de la Costa mountain range at the coast and the Andes Mountains. In 2003, a small skeleton would be discovered in this desert. Not just any old, little, regular person, though. Apparently, the skeleton was just six inches long and its skull was cone-shaped. Not only that, but the tiny skeleton also has 10 pairs of ribs instead of the usual 12 that human beings have. Naturally, many have pointed out that the only explanation for something like this? Aliens. Of course it's aliens. Definitely a tiny alien skeleton randomly in the middle of the Chilean desert. Those scatterbrained extraterrestrials, <laughs> they're always leaving their skeletons on random planets in random deserts. You know, it happens all the time. The UFO party poopers, however, have busted up all the ideas of alien fun and have said that it most likely is just the bones of a non-human primate. Those spoil sports. Number 6. Three-Eyed Fish Found in Argentina much like the three-eyed fish called Blinky from The Simpsons, here is a three-eyed fish from the real world that was caught, allegedly, by some fishermen in Cordoba in Argentina. And guess what? Yes, it was near a nuclear power plant, just like the cartoon fish. You guys see this? It's three eyes. This is not exactly any kind of thrilling news. Anything that involves a nuclear power plant in the headlines is rarely the cause for a celebration. They tend to be tales of doom and gloom and, for now, apparently mutants. Although it should be said that the nuclear power plant has not actually been officially linked to this weird three-eyed fish in any kind of way, it was handed to the local authorities for further testing, but funnily enough, no results have been yet forthcoming. I don't know though, if you were the local authorities in a South American country where there might be a link to mutant fish and a nuclear power plant, you would probably hope that people would just forget about that and not ask any more questions about pesky test results or anything of the sort now, wouldn't you? Number 5. The Lloyds Bank Coprolite the city of York in the United Kingdom is famous for its Viking heritage. There is loads and loads of cool and interesting history from that era in the area and they're proud to show it off, even the weirder and less attractive aspects of it as well. This is a coprolite, that's a fancy word for a fossilized poo. And it's a human one as well. In fact, this is the biggest human poo fossil in the world and it was found in the bank. Not the river bank, but the actual money bank. 
Back in 1972, the Lloyds Bank Coprolite, as it is known, would be discovered during the planned opening of a new branch of the bank in Pavement Street in York. But as work began on the building, workmen would discover all kinds of cool Viking stuff in the foundations. So then came the archaeologists to poke about in all that stuff. In amongst all the usual Viking detritus, they then discovered the Coprolite, which made them all very excited indeed. It's believed believed to date from the 9th century AD, it measures 8 inches in length and 2 inches in width, and that makes it the biggest bit of paleo feces that's ever been found. From this one old giant turd, the historians have been able to learn a lot about what life was like in Viking Britain. They analyzed this plop, and that's when they discovered that this particular Viking lived on meat and grains and barely even ate a fruit or vegetable. That this Viking was also rather bunged up and suffered from constipation. And what's more, they also had worms. Oh, the great deep joy. Number 4. Sheep's Head Iceland is kind of famous for its weird and fairly unpalatable sounding dinners. You know, rotten shark meat, anyone? Today, though, we have another offering from the Icelandic menu. That would be svid or svith. This traditional dish is a sheep's head, and it's been cut in half, and then it's singed to remove all the woolly stuff, and then the brain is removed and boiled, occasionally, presumably for extra ew, and it's cured in lactic acid. It sounds absolutely delicious. This meal actually originates from a time when people would use every single part of the animal and not let anything go to waste. There are few rules to bear in mind before you attempt to recreate this tasty meal at home. The ears, well, they're a taboo area. They should be removed as it's there that the superstition believes since they usually bear the owner's mark, the eater will be accused of theft if they were to eat the ears. I don't know. They also believe that they have to break a small bone that sits beneath the sheep's tongue. If it's not broken, then a child who has not yet learned how to speak will forever be silent. But the best part? Generally considered to be the eyeball. Because, you know, I'm sure it is. Number 3. Found a new car that was buried 50 years ago. Now, we all know that there are many reasons to be suspicious of Oklahoma. That place is definitely up to something, but what that might be, well, that's anyone's guess. Like this absolutely bizarre thing that they did back in the late 1950s. Tulsa, Oklahoma held a contest that celebrated the state's 50th anniversary. So far, so regular. They decided that this couldn't be any old normal competition, though. They needed to get some of that sweet newspaper attention and attract people to visit the state of Oklahoma. So they wanted to show what kind of quirky original Fruit Loops that they really were. Those who entered the competition could win a brand new Plymouth Belvedere. All they had to do was guess what the town's population would be in 50 years time. You know, in the year 2007, when a lot of them would be dead? It seems straightforward, but the quirk here might be the obvious. How do you win a car in the 1950s if you won't win the competition until 2007? The idea that they had was that the car would be kept in perfect condition for 50 years and would only be uncovered again when the winner was announced. Anyways, for the purposes of novelty, they then decided to bury that Plymouth Belvedere. They wrapped it up and dug a hole and essentially buried it in a nuclear bunker. Those things were all the rage at the time, you know. They then put the competition ballots in the glove box and buried the car for 50 years. Then in 2007, they remembered where it was and dutifully dug it up again and made a whole big show of it. The winner was actually a dead guy, so that was a bit of a bummer, but they then decided that his sister would be the worthy recipient. Except that this car was basically now just a heap of rust and essentially useless. Good work, Oklahoma! Number 2. Nargis Mongolian Cuisine Mongolian cuisine tends to use all of the animal, and nothing goes to waste. That means eating all of the organs, and also finding creative ways to cook the meat in the first place. This is Mongolian barbecue, otherwise known as boo dog. It's basically a technique whereby goat is cooked inside of itself. First, you choose your goat from the herd. 
Then you slaughter it and take off the skin, and this takes a long time and everybody gets involved. This is a meal that is prepared for special occasions, so it's a big event when it's cooked. After the meat is prepared, the fire has to be laid, and then the cooking can begin. They heat stones on the fire and place them inside of the goat's skin. That was removed earlier, and then they'll add all of the prepared meat and vegetables inside of that skin with hot stones and salt until it's all full up. Then the entire thing is put on the fire, a blowtorch is used to blast the outside of the goat skin bundle, and eventually it's ready to eat. The scorched and cooked and clean skin is then sliced open to reveal the cooked meat inside, along with the hot stones. There will be about two or three liters of soup along with that meat, and this is enough to feed a big crowd. And really, is it all that gross? I mean, you know where the meat comes from, right? Number 1. Baloo – Fertilized Duck Egg and finally, here's one that you may have heard of before and we're probably waiting on. This is Baloo, or fertilized duck eggs. That means exactly what you think it does. These are eggs in which a baby bird has indeed been incubating for several weeks, but instead of hatching into a cute and fluffy little duckling, it's going to get cooked and eaten right from the shell. Life can be cruel sometimes. This is a popular dish from Southeast Asia which may appear, to begin with anyways, like a hard-boiled egg, except that it's actually a hard-boiled duck fetus. And that is enough to unsettle most Western-stomached wimps. To be honest though, this one may be a bit much. I mean, you can actually see its face. That's really quite enough for me. I actually can't take any more of this. Thank you, that's the end. Did you actually make it all the way to the end? I don't know whether to congratulate you on your nerves of steel or call the cops because you're clearly a concern. Either way, here we are. We all made it here together. Let's never go through that again. I'm going to make a video about cute animal friendships to wash all of this horror right out of my brain. How was it for you? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, presumably better than this, and I'll see you next time.